and with me is Father Jeremy Seacrest. Uh, some of you may remember him. We visited a Pfeffer organ in Starkenburg, Missouri. Uh, you're a big fan of Pfeffer organs, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Tell me how you got that fascination with these instruments. Well, it's uh, from the first time that I had encountered, growing up, encountering the instrument at uh, Starkenburg, and then at one of my previous assignments in St. Thomas, having the opportunity to uh, restore that instrument. And, Got that, that got the ball rolling. Okay, well, there's actually two videos. We visited Starkenburg and St. Thomas, and there'll be links to those down in the description. Um, of course, Pfeffer, a St. Louis area builder from the mid-19th century. I don't remember when he got started. Yeah, he, he was, um, it was thought that he had trained with Mets um, in the St. Louis area after he and his wife had immigrated uh, to the St. Louis area, and so probably he started building his own instruments 1850s or so. Okay, so and flourished through the 19th century until he finally died and his son sold the business in 1911, I think is correct. Yeah, to, uh, Kilgan, the Kilgan Company um, took over um, Pfeffer in 1910. So here in the St. Louis area, we have a number of Pfeffer and remnants of Pfeffer organs, and they're kind of fun to look at and see how things changed and how things didn't. So today we've come to Catawissa, Missouri. Uh, outside, we're in Franklin County, Missouri, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, a little bit outside of St. Louis, uh, to St. Patrick Rock Church, they call it, because it's a nice big stone building. Right. Um, a real interesting history to this church. Yeah. Uh, it was founded before the Civil War, and the building was completed after the Civil War, and then... Uh, stopped being a church in 19... 1924 or so is when the, the parish itself closed. But the building is still here. Yeah. They still use it. They have a fantastic organization that's keeping it running and taking care of this organ that we're standing here in front of today. Um, this is a Pfeffer instrument from, we don't know exactly what year. Um, it's 1890s is kind of my guess. Yeah, the thought is uh, because there was a fire here uh, about 1885, that um, burned the whole roof and everything uh, once it was rebuilt then the instrument was was moved here from um, one theory is from another location down south well but there is a name of the priest who was here inside the case they use the case of the organ to actually ship the pipes down here probably by train to Catawissa uh, which is still a few miles down the road to the actual town uh, we're out really out here in the woods uh, so that priest was at least responsible for getting it here maybe they repackaged an old organ and just put it on the train, who knows how it got yeah. here. Uh, but it's a fantastic little instrument of one, two, three, four, five, 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 five ranks, ranks. Um, all in a very attractive facade. Now this instrument was, uh, I've already been crawling around inside, was rebuilt by Philip Haining, who was an Iowa uh, restorer of organs. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, he died just a few years ago, so we can't ask him about mm -hmm. uh, what happened here. Uh, but it looks like the facade has been touched up, mm -hmm. the, the original. It looks like a very original uh, Pfeffer design, so I'm just guessing he went in and, and cleaned it up a little bit because the bottom is not quite as, as, as shiny as the top, so that's, that's my guess. <laughs> and then there's a few little things inside we can look at, uh, and I think it was re-leathered, um, but it's still hand-pumped. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, uh, as you can tell, it's a little cold today because it's October and this is an unheated, um, unair conditioned, we have a little bit of electricity but there's no, there's no blower on this organ, it is still hand pumped. So if we're going to let people hear it, I'm going to need your help. All right. So you know That's your job. why you brought me along. <laughs> Here we go. Pumping away, so you'll get to hear hopefully a little bit of that noise. We'll start right here, the open diapason's in the facade and it's our first rank on the chest. tone you get a little bit of bounciness from the uh, <laughs> the blower but um, after that on top we have a four foot octave that's actually on the back of the chest but here it is with both it's the four foot by itself down low to the eight foot. Not quite as big. It, it, it's a sm definitely smaller scale and it, the eight foot is most of this organ. We have then behind uh, the, um, the open and uh, Dulciana, eight foot. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, flute bass. Sure, bass. It's very big compared to the rest of the Dulciana. Very gentle. We're getting up in the rain of winter tuning there, so we're just going to let that go. And then we have an eight foot stop diapason behind that. Big flute sound there, a lot of wind, uh, but uh, it, nice foil to the great diapason there, to the, to the open diapason. Now we have a 16 foot uh, sub bass pedal, um, what do we call it, a Borden. The big sound. So with the diapason, Definitely a company a room full of people singing in here, I think, on that. It's a lot of sound. Can't get over how big that pedal is. Can you half draw it? Can we half draw it? Let's see. Yeah. Here's the full volume. Yeah, it cuts off the air a little enough that you can. So you can almost use it with a dulciana then if you do that. Not recommended on all tracker organs, but it works because. <laughs> it does. It's all one right. of my Pfeffer tricks that I've found. All right, all right. Well, we'll. <laughs> Good to know. So yeah, you don't always have to have that full big Borden sound. Okay. So there's a panel in the back of the organ that is removable that allows you to step inside the case. And here we are looking through that panel. Looks like some tuning slides have been added to some of the smaller pipes. We can see there the uh, name of the priest and the location when this case was used as the shipping box for the organ and brought to Katowice. So that was the priest who initially opened the church. And we can see back here some painting and there's Philip Haining's signature and date, so indicating this was restored in 2008. Philip also seemed to feel the need to put names of notes on all of the pipes. Some more writing back there. You see our Dulciana, the flute, and then here's our four foot principal. And then back here we have the 16 foot Borden. Turning around, we can see the treble end of that. You have to step over it to get to the walkboard. Now we've taken off the side here where the blower handle goes, and we can peek in at the regulator. There's the original blower handle. Looks like original stones used for weight there. Operating the blower handle works the feeder underneath, which forces air up into the regulator on top. It does appear that that's new leather. Old leather having been removed, you can see little traces of it. The leather's certainly in good shape. Now we're looking in the back corner, and this is where the stop control for the pedal is. That controls a ventil, it lets air into the chest. So you can actually move it halfway and only let half the pressure in, which allows you to play the board in a little softer. 
Here's some uh, restorative woodwork. Now, this is obviously not original. Um, and while it is certainly not even the most attractive work, uh, it's very clear what is original and what's not, which is kind of a good thing. Now we got the knee panel off and are looking at the action underneath. We can see that a few things have been repaired and there's some uh, joins there on some of the trackers. So uh, because it's clear, you know, this is kind of OK that we're not trying to pretend that this is all 100 percent original. We can look and see exactly what's been changed or modified over time. Now looking under the roller board, we can get a little closer look at the feeders underneath. All right, thank you for your, your arm work there, keeping the organ going. Very that's, good. That's, that's a bit of exercise. Yeah, yeah. glad and we're it, friends. And so. it is cold in here um, because uh, well, I have noticed from, from having been in here before when the temperature warms up a little bit, the, the organ actually does better. It okay. leaks a little bit when it's cold. So, um, yeah, I, I've played a wedding in here in December. Yeah, okay. so not recommended. Um, <laughs> this organ was, was featured before with the Oregon Historical Society, mm -hmm. correct? Tell me yeah, about that. back in 1979, uh, the last time that the OHS had a, a national convention in St. Louis, uh, this was one of the, the featured instruments, and um, John Ditto, um, the longtime um, UMKC organ professor who just uh, died earlier this year, uh, he played uh, this instrument back in 1979. And so, a room full of people singing in here along with this, that must yeah. have been something to see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks again for coming out and sharing some of your knowledge and helping me uh, put this instrument in perspective. Like I said, we don't really know when it was built, but based on others, it seems like that 1890s date um, seems about accurate. Uh, maybe more, maybe there's somebody out there that knows more about it. Uh, like I said, this isn't a, a functioning parish church anymore, but it is a functioning busy place. They do have weddings and masses out here throughout the year occasionally. Um, the St. Patrick's Old Rock Church uh, Preservation Society, of which David Murphy is the president, does a great job. Um, so they're always happy for any help you can offer if you want to help uh, come see this instrument or just send along some support so that they can keep it sounding its best. Uh, we'll put a link down to them down in the web in the bottom of the description there. Uh, but David was a great help today in letting us come out and see this instrument. So our thanks to David and to the rest of the society. Uh, and everybody that helped see this, and you again. Thank you for all your help in uh, keeping these old instruments playing. Tell me where you're placed now, because the last time we saw you, you were uh, in St. Thomas, so you've moved on since then. Yeah, uh, and after St. Thomas, I went to St. Peter uh, Church in Jeff City um, for about four and a half years, and currently I'm up in Sheridan County. Um, the particular church uh, in Salisbury had a pfeffer before. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, the church is currently closed for uh, renovation and restoration, um, so we're going to see what kind of instrument we can... Uh, see if you can find some, dig something up. Well, exactly. it, it's known to happen, so yes. keep that going. And you were connected with a new instrument in Jefferson City as well. For, yes, uh, for there a would couple be, of them. Well, the uh, <laughs> new instrument for the Cathedral of St. Joseph, it's um, the uh, Buzard Company, Opus Number 49. Okay. And it should be um, installation beginning uh, right after Easter. In 2024. We have plans to be there not long after that opens up, so maybe we'll see you again there. Okay. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, then please uh, give us a thumbs up down below, and remember to subscribe to our channel, because we hopefully we'll have some videos coming out from some warmer locations, I hope, before long. Uh, until then, remember, uh, click the bell to get notifications. Um, again, thank you again, Jeremy. I'm Brent Johnson. Thank you for watching.